Welcome to The Money Hour with host Tina Mitchell and co-host Keelan Harvey. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 133075, are licensed loan originators with Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, and MLS 7233. The views expressed by the speakers on the following program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC. Now, in the studio, local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome to The Money on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, November 23rd show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I am your co-host, Keelan Harvey. Your local mortgage experts bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events in our local economy and how it will affect your money. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show today. Please call the show at one 855 400 1150. Again, that's 1 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. And our lineup for today's show we have Leanne Cabot of Five Seasons of Life Uncover Your Business Brilliance. We also have in studio D Gupta of D Coaching. I love her, I miss her, and I'm so much in pain. That's the conversation with Dee today. And last guest in studio, Karen Koenig, uh, Women on Top, How to Win a Woman's Way. Great information and great guest in studio. For more information or to talk with the guests that we have on the show today, please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. And Keelan, what do you think? We should start out with a little money chat. I like it. Let's mm-hmm. do it. Money. Money. All righty, Keelan. I'm always like trying to put my ear up against the uh, wall to hear what you're coming up with for money chat, but. I didn't hear today. Well, what do you got for the show? Kind of fun and random. Um, I learned about, uh, I don't know about you, but my favorite road in Seattle ever was the viaduct and it disappeared. Yeah. And mm. um, I have all these iconic memories of driving, like taking family across and look at the beautiful oh. water. But I wouldn't want to be in an earthquake. And so I get it. We had to get rid of it. But, yeah. And so uh, I learned about this new thing. It's called Friends of Waterfront Seattle.org. So it's a nonprofit that's supporting the waterfront. And, and so there's a new virtual experience for us. No yeah, way. Us Seattleite people can go to the waterfront. And from noon until five, Wednesday through Sunday, you can go there and they'll give you like all these interactive things that you can do. So we can actually see. It's so new to us because we have this tunnel yeah. that's new and we don't know what's going to happen above it on this whole waterfront thing. Yes. And for us that are born and raised here, we're like, oh, man, what's this going to be about? Uh-huh. And so they have this whole thing that you can go down and you can check out and see what it's going to be about. Oh, and God. right now they're giving away um, some of the rubble from the viaduct. So I thought that's kind of cool. And maybe I'm yeah. just a nerd and I want a piece of a rock. Yeah. You know? but, no, I, I would but, like a piece of the rock. But I was just thinking the other day, London, we were getting ready for Christmas here in yeah. the studio. Mm-hmm. And she's seen the socks on the wall. They're not stockings. They're socks. They're okay. big socks on the uh-huh. wall. And I'm thinking, well, there's going to be, a, instead of coal, because I was thinking about coal with stockings, yeah. there's going to be kids maybe with rocks in their in their stockings oh. this year. <laughs> hey, do you guys do uh, like the little elf at home? We do. That is so. Why didn't it. we have little else where we get a gift every single day? We weren't. I don't. I don't know. Maybe they just weren't as creative. Or yeah. Maybe. London got pretty bored with it though. After a while, really? she's like, "Oh, there he is again. Who like great? <laughs> He's in the cereal this time." <laughs> You know, like that sounds like London. That little elf. I think she's too smart for it. Like, wow. I don't know why we're putting a stuffed animal around the house. Well, you're obviously not silly. giving her good enough presents with the elf, because otherwise she'd be really excited to see the elf. I, didn't, I, I don't need know about to help presents. you out. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Well, you're supposed to have like a little something. No, I'm gonna it's get just some... like spot the elf. I thought. No, oh, you're, so I'm screwing the elf it is supposed up. to bring oh, like a little gift. Wah, okay, wah, I'll, wah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hook I'm gonna hook you up. All right. All so right. yeah, great great bringing some memories uh, in, and we'll have to definitely do that virtual uh, virtual thing. So I thought I'd talk about budgeting tips. Are you heading into a money spending splurge? The holiday season is coming and all the spending is speeding up. It's a great time to focus on budgeting tips and to prepare for your financial success over the holiday. It's really easy to understand how to carefully 
uh, budget and it will improve your financial situation. And we all know that fewer financial problems is means less stress, and we definitely want less stress during the holidays. If you have a spouse or a partner, working together on a budget can help your relationship with money arguments being one of the largest causes of divorce. Managing your budget can relieve financial stress on the marriage and make your life a lot better all around. So, but we also know that always being practical and careful and responsible can be overwhelming. And this is why I thought I would share a gift for the holidays and share my own personal budgeting tips so that you can be ready to end the year with great financial success so that you can begin 2020 maybe a little bit better than you uh, began 2019. So here are my budgeting tips. First tip is to focus on savings, always having something that you want. If you're wanting for something, it'll be easier for you to save and not spend money. Because if you're always thinking about saving, you're going to be spending less. So always have something that you want to buy. And it doesn't have to be something that's practical. You know, if I'm talking to the girls on the show, you may want that really expensive purse. It's not practical, but you're saving. (laughs) And so it's okay as long as you're always saving for something. So think about the last time that you purchased an item of clothing, especially for the girls listening, and you never wore it. And it's a few months later, maybe it's even into the next year, and then you give it away to Goodwill. What about the guys listening that you bought some, you know, great tool or something, and you never actually took it out of the package? And the next thing that you know is you're having a garage sale and selling all of these things for penny on the dollar. If you were actually saving something, something that you really wanted, you most likely would have not purchase those items. My second tip is to write down or use an app and make note of everything that you're purchasing. This includes an item for five bucks. It doesn't matter how much you're spending. The, the idea of actually physically writing it down or putting it on your app, there's enough time for you to be thinking about whether you should actually purchase it and it will save a lot of unnecessary purchases. Third tip is to use cash. Now you may tell yourself, I want to use my credit cards for bonus, trust me, or you know, for all the, the bonuses and gifts, the miles, um, trust me, Dave and I do that. We've, you know, use our for for uh, miles because I do so much traveling. And uh, but what we do is we do it for our really big ticket items. All your other things, the smaller things, always use cash. And that will actually help you save a lot of money. Fourth tip is know where that you're spending your money. To be truly committed to budgeting, you must have a budget. Have a record of everything that you need to spend on a monthly basis. See where you can save and and what things that you really don't need again. This may take a few months to get it all together, but you want to make sure that you don't miss anything so that you can track it all. And once you're confident that you have everything, then you can put your plan into action. And then, of course, stay committed. I suggest that you review in detail on an annual basis to take a look if there's different things that are changing or areas that you can save. Anytime you're making a major purchase, like a home purchase, it's a really good time to look at everything again. But at minimum, you want to take a look and review everything that you're spending on an annual basis. Uh, Fifth tip, tip is to understand your goals. The goal of budgeting is not to track every dime that you spend, even though you are. That's certainly the way that you're budgeting. But the real goal, in fact, is that you know where your money is going to be able to have an effective budget. So um, it's just knowing where everything's spending so that you can save that money. Now, the sixth tip and the last tip is to save first. Remember that the goal of budgeting is to spend less so that you can make or i.e. save more money. One of the best ways to do this is to save first. So what majority of people do is they spend everything that they have and then whatever's left over at the end of the month, that's what they consider their savings. And a good rule of thumb is to save 20% of what your take home is. Have 50 percent that's used for the necessities, the things that you need to have, and then your lifestyle, your choices that you have for everything else, all of the extras, 30 percent. So put that 20 percent savings away first. Even if you don't storm the shells at the 3 a.m. Black Friday or go crazy over the Cyber Monday, there's a good chance that you will overspend during the holiday seasons if you don't budget. So please uh, don't fret about your financing. Just take a look at the financing a little bit different. Friend, and that's my holiday gift for you. Coming up next on the Money Hour, overcome your business brilliance. Leanne Cabot of Five Seasons of Life, right here at 1150 AM KKNW after the short break.
when the cold wind picks up and the autumn leaves swirl around, we know what we need to do. Put on a warm coat, trade our flip-flops for fuzzy socks and boots. A beautiful summer day means we slip on a t-shirt and shorts and face the world with a smile. Just as nature has its seasons, so does your business. Thousands of us start our day strong and empowered, only to feel deflated by lunch. Or maybe it seems no matter how hard we hustle from sunup to sundown, we feel like we're sinking in quicksand. Author and speaker Leanne Cabot helps you uncover your business brilliance so you can confidently weather every season. In her latest book called The Five Seasons of Connection to Your Business Brilliance, Leanne explains that there are actually five seasons in our business cycles, and she helps us harness the power of each season to be our best, shine our brightest, and share our brilliance with the world. Hi, I'm Leanne Cabot, creator of The Five Seasons Life. If you know you're destined to change lives, but can't move forward because you feel stuck, frustrated, or full of worry, doubt, or fear, it's time to connect to your business brilliance and make the impact and the income you desire. Find me at 5seasonslife.com. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to the Vineyard on 1150 AM KKNW at the Saturday, November 23rd show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I'm your co-host, Keelan Harvey. You're our local mortgage experts. It's a great day to talk about money. That's what the show is all about, how to make money, how to save money so you can have a better quality of life for you and your family. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to our rebroadcast, but we're here to connect you with our guest. You can call the show at one 855 411 Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. In studio right now, we have Leanne Cabot of Five Seasons of Life, Uncover Your Business Brilliance. Leanne, first time in studio. We're very excited to have you here today. I am super excited. Thank you for having me. Wonderful, of course. A little bit about Leanne. She hosts the Five Seasons Life podcast and is an author, speaker, and business brilliance catalyst. The transformative power of her five season strategies helps two groups, women who create a vibrant life while being a fully connected mom and entrepreneurs who want to move from struggling to successful in their businesses. Leanne developed the five seasons framework after receiving a harrowing medical diagnosis in 2006 that gave her five years to live. For the first three years, she was busy dying. Then she decided to live. Over the last 13 years, she built a mission-driven business, published three books, is raising three teens, celebrates her huge life goal of visiting 50 countries. Wow. And you can find her on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, or sitting by her, the lake, just daydreaming. Leanne, I love it. What a crazy journey, and how amazing Mm -hmm. are you? (laughs) <laughs> um, being given five years to live after a brain crash in 2006. Tell us about that. How has that journey shaped who you are today? I can only imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, um, we had just moved to Seattle from Ottawa, Canada. So I had not established a network. My husband was off on his initial business trip for his new company job. Um, it was a really hard time. I had two toddlers at the time. I was pregnant oh with baby gosh. number three. And um, when he was in California, the crash happened the first time. And it was the most devastating period of my life. Obviously, the entire multiple level of hours that I laid on the floor flo- frozen, but also the number of months afterwards that they kept digging around, right? And after mm-hmm. the baby was born, it was just testing and poking and prodding. And what is it? What does she have? And everybody wanted to solve the puzzle. Um, So it was a really stressful journey having three small children and having this, you know, looming medical problem hanging over me. But I think one of the things that I was super grateful for was just how I was able to dig kind of deep into who I was and say, this is what I need and I'm going to claim that I need this, right? So I think one of the things that I see with a lot of women that I work with is they will not only put themselves last, but deny what they need to kind of get through whatever hardships they're going through. And I really decided that wasn't going to be how it was going to be for me. If I needed sleep, I needed to sleep. If I needed to go for a walk, if I needed to play, 
dishes did not get done in my house. You know, I <laughs> did not sweep the floor. I remember my yeah. mother-in-law came and she was commenting on my baseboards. Like, when is the last time you dusted your baseboards? And I'm like, who has yeah. time in their life for that? <laughs> exactly. Right? Like, that is never going to happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it just, it made me crystal clear on what priorities mattered to me and my family. And then as I became healthier and stronger, you know, the business that I decided to build. Yeah, and and I love it. I love in your bio um, that you got busy dying and then you got busy living. Totally. And you know, my message is tragedy to triumph. I be, believe the bigger the tragedy, the bigger the triumph. You just know how to. You just have to know how to use that fight within you mm -hmm. to conquer whatever tragedy that you have. And mm -hmm. so, um, it's I'm so blessed to have you in studio here and sharing your uh, inspiration with our listeners. So 2019, it was it's been a really busy year for you. You published your first book in February called The Five Seasons of Connection to Your child. And last week you published your second book, Congratulations, The Five Seasons of Connection to Your Business Brilliance. I love that. Br business Brilliant. I can't say it, but I love <laughs> Business Brilliance. It's a bit of a tongue twister. And, yeah. uh, so walk us through the seasons that you speak of in your books. Mm -hmm. So as I was parenting my kids, I just realized that there were a lot of similarities between the seasons in my family and the actual seasons here. Yeah. And so it just really transformed the way that I was interacting with them. I was sick. I was feeling like every moment was my last moment with them. Do I want them to remember me as this nagging, screaming, barking, crazy person? Or did I want them to have with them like all of the love that I felt? So yeah. it really... Um, came out of this space where I just wanted to always be in this summer space with them. So it just felt like I always wanted to be happy. I wanted to be connected. I wanted it to be warm. I wanted them always to remember like this expansive feeling of love. Yeah. And so the five seasons came out of that experience. And summer is that, right? It is that happy, promised place where you just are feeling your absolute best. Mm -hmm. And then the flip side of that, of course, is winter, right? Where you are completely disconnected. You are struggling. Things are hard. It's dark. You're shutting down. And then when you are in that dark place, how we get out of those tragedies, like yeah. you said, Tina, how we rebuild things is we spring clean, right? Mm -hmm. So we start, you know, bringing in some of the techniques to spring clean what got us into winter in the first place. And as we spring clean, we start to realize that, yes, we are back in that summer spot again. So we are back to that happy place we cleaned you know, what got us into winter. We are now in the promised place. And then we get a little complacent and we get a little, you know, a little not noticing the little mm -hmm. things and we slide into fall. And fall is really that warning space where you're like, hmm, they slam the door. Wait a minute. What's what's going on? You yeah. know? And then the fifth season that I talk about is called the crossroads. And so when that child comes in, they throw down their bag, they slam the door. You can either slide into winter and go down mm -hmm. the hallway and you know, bark at them, we don't walk in the house that way, uh -huh. um, which will take you into a place of conflict. Or you invite them back to summer and say, hey, honey, is everything okay? What happened? Yeah. You know, something must have happened to make you feel so much energy coming in the house and slamming the door. So the crossroads is really our opportunity to be the person that we want to be in that space. Yeah. It's, it's so beautiful. And and we all have to go through those seasons. It's how you get through the seasons to navigate mm -hmm. into the next. And I, mm -hmm. and I love that. Um, and at the same time, winter is winter, but winter can be a beautiful thing if you mm -hmm. embrace what the uniqueness about winter has to offer. Right. And uh, that's so beautiful. Thank you. And, and what a great analogy in Seattle, because mm -hmm. we have the seasons yeah, we here. Do. And We're I, so fortunate. I embrace that. I love it. When uh -huh. I'm, I'm kind of over summer, mm -hmm. and then the fall happens, mm -hmm. and then the sweaters come out, and the coffee, mm -hmm. and then winter. Mm -hmm. And with I mean, the mountains and everything, you can embrace all of our seasons yeah. here. So how cool is that? Uh -huh. So how do these seasons lead you to more connections and less chaos with your family and in your business? How, how can people utilize some tools to help them for this? I think one of the most important pieces from the five seasons that I have gotten and that I then turn around and give to my clients is that we control it all. We yeah. control it all, right? Mm -hmm. We choose mm -hmm. every day how we're going to be showing up. If you are going to be in conflict with your kids, no matter how badly people push back on me, they are participating in that yeah. because they have the tools more than the child does to navigate back to summer, right? So part of the, a big part of this book is really on becoming more self-aware and identifying what are your hot buttons? Like what pushes you into winter? Yeah. You know, some families just find that, lying is something that they cannot tolerate 
It's like, okay, so we're going to build strategies around something that you know triggers you to response in a winter conflict-ridden way. Um, so it's just really about knowing who you are and what kind of situations might come up in your family mm-hmm. so you can build practices around it. You're not going to get rid of winter. You're not going to get rid of conflict. Yeah. But when you come to it as this is an opportunity to learn, maybe my child is pushing back because they don't want things to be the way they are. They're starting to stretch their independence and they're pushing back and testing me. Now's the time just to reevaluate. So it really, I mean, if you think of it like a spiral, you can keep circling around the same issues. But every time you get there, you want it to be a little bit more evolved. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. And and those struggles, those are the times that lessons need to be learned, and that's why they're there. It's how you embrace those, just as you said. So let's talk about uh, your work with your clients and how it's evolved after creating the business brilliance strategy. Absolutely. So many of the times I would work with families, and they would come and say, you know, this is amazing. You helped us with our family, but do you do anything for businesses? And they would whisper it, you know, especially the women. They were not mm-hmm. confident that they could even create a business. And I said, yes, of course I do. Like this, yeah. the system is absolutely transferable to that, to that place. So mm-hmm. the seasons are exactly the same, but obviously uncovering your business brilliance really is about pulling back the layers of all of the you know, the, the shame and the doubt and the fear and yeah. things that we layer on top of ourselves when we think we can't show up fully as who we are. So yes. really being in your brilliance is doing the thing that is most aligned with who you are and your goals, your priorities, and where you want to be in your life, right? So if you feel like you are constrained and restricted in some ways, you are not operating in your business brilliance. Yeah. You know, I have I have many artist clients who are doing accounting type jobs and they're, you know, they dread every morning and they're mm. sick and they, you know, it manifests in physical, you know, ailments. And I'm like, you are not in your brilliance. Yeah. Right. So, you know, if you need to keep that job in the short term, but let us figure out a way that you can take your skills and your brilliance and bring it together to be more in aligned with what you naturally can give the world to make it a better place. Yeah. All right, Leanne, so what are some of the ways that people can leverage their business brilliance? I really love this idea of where they truly shine. How can they leverage that to make their business grow and be successful? So I think one of the things that you want to do when you own a business is understand your strengths and your abilities so that you know what you shouldn't be doing, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because I think some people get stuck on doing all the things that they really dread and that are really kind of energy sucks for their life. And they're not actually operating in their best place. So part of it is knowing what your strengths are and then knowing areas of, you know, where you should be outsourcing or who else you should be bringing onto your team to supplement your brilliance. Because as many times as you can stay in that zone of genius, it really will enable you to touch more people and positively, you know, grow your impact and your income. And I think that's why people start their businesses to get that level of freedom. But when they're suffocating under all of the things that they haven't quite mastered, they think this isn't for me. I'm not good enough. I suck at being a business owner. And that's just not true. They're really just staying in, you know, their, their space of unbrilliance. And she speaks my language, obviously. One of my core practices, <laughs> embrace your strength, hire out your weakness, spend valuable time mastering your strengths instead of trying to improve your weaknesses. Make sure you have those to-do list, but also your not-to-do list. Um, so true. So let's talk about why do you recommend people learn about their brilliance, business brilliance? Because I think there is a lot of opportunity in the world right now. I mean, I have clients in Africa. I have a client in Australia. Like this, yeah. the time is so ripe for us to be crossing boundaries and cultures and geography to really help people shine in their own brilliance. And so if you know your brilliance and you're able to operate from that place, your reach, your ripples can go super far and you can impact people all over the world. Like know your brilliance and then harness that power to really make the most of the time that you work. Because yes, we want to work and we want to be effective, but we also want to live. Yes. Right. And so just having that opportunity to build the actual full life in the full spectrum life um, is what I think most people are after. So they want a super engaging professional life and a very fulfilling personal life. Yeah. And your success in business or your success in your personal life, there are core practices that we all know it's sharing it in your own brilliance way and it doesn't matter where they're at in the world. So mm-hmm. I, I love that you're sharing that. So as we're wrapping up our time uh, with you, Leanne, where can our listeners get your books? Mm, thank you. 
So um, I'm on the five seasons life.com and my books are all available on Amazon. Yeah, wonderful. Well, congratulations again to all your success and con- you. um, congratulations as well from from healing and just uh, becoming the greatest person that you can or the greatest person that you were meant to be out of a, a tragedy like that. Thank you very much. I'm yeah. honored to be here. Thank yeah, you. I look forward to having you back. And coming up next in the Money Hour, I love her. I miss her. I'm in so much pain. D Gupa of D Coaching right here at 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. Are you a tech professional who wants to get your voice heard in meetings and events? Are you tired of being invisible or of people talking over you? Do you believe you have the talent to make more impact at work but don't know how or where to begin? Are you living on autopilot not knowing where your time has gone? Or do you want to make the best use of your time on this planet? To have a powerful voice in this world, you need to build up your communication skills and courage step by step. To live your life in a powerful way, you need to have crystal clear goals and work through problems along the way until you achieve those goals. D. Gupta of D. Coaching is an expert at unleashing your personal power and will coach you through a simple and easy to follow process that will build up your skills and courage. D. is passionate about firing people up to follow their dreams by walking them through her effective proprietary process of goal setting and follow through. This is D. from D. Coaching. To learn more about me, visit my website at speakpowerfullycoaching.com and follow the links to connect with me on social media. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money. We're on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, November 23rd show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I'm your co-host, Keelan Harvey. Your local mortgage experts. We are here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to connect you with the guests that we have on the show. Please call the show at one 855 400 1150. Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. In studio right now, we have Dee Gupa of D Coaching. Yes, she's been in before. Very excited to have her back. And I always love her uh, topic segment titles that she comes up with. Today it's I love her. I miss her. I am so much in pain. Dee, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for having me. And a little bit about Dee. Dee is a part-time coach and a full-time rental property business owner who has done extensive study in emotional growth. Her perspective perspective is that you are where you are choosing to be in your life, your financial status, your quality of life uh, that you live, and your relationships with friends, family, and significant other. Everything is either where you want it to be or where your belief level is where you can be. The stage of personal growth that you are in each area of your life determines where you are in that area. You cannot make more money than you believe you can make. You cannot have a better relationship than you believe that you're capable of having. And your belief in your own worthiness in each area of your life sets the tone for where you are. And D, she's helping her clients break those ceilings. Love that. Dee, it's so cool to see your uh, your titles here. I love her. I miss her. I'm in so much pain. You have so much good information all the time. So I'm really curious, what's up with the title today? Can you explain that to our listeners? Where are we going with this? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sound a little bit harsh and strong and crazy, but I promise it comes from a place of kindness and love. Thank you for that disclosure. <laughs> if everybody saw and knew you, they would know it comes from a place of kindness and love. Quit being weak. <laughs> Go ahead, D. So have you ever felt pain because somebody passed away? Have mm-hmm. you ever felt pain because somebody broke up with you? What I'm here to talk about today is to break the myth that if you are if you love somebody and they're not with you, either temporarily or permanently, then you're in pain because of them. Being in any kind of pain is not because you love somebody and they're not with you. It is because you yourself need to do some inner work. Mm. So a relationship is an emotion multiplier. 
if you are inherently sad, then being in any kind of relationship is going to make you many fold sadder. Yeah. If you're happy inherently, then being in a relationship is going to make you feel that much happier. If you're feeling love, then being in a relationship is going to multiply that yes. again. So if you understand that, I mean, that anytime you're in pain, it is coming from within. And if you work on that pain, then you can choose to feel love or feel joy even after somebody has passed away or even if somebody has broken up with you or even if you're having a long distance relationship and it's yeah. like, oh my God, I'm in so much pain. You can choose to transform that into love and joy. Yeah. And that's and so true. I think it's, you know, embracing that pain for what it is because you have to go through those or as our uh, first uh, guest talked about the different seasons, you've got to go through that process. But ultimately, you want to get to a place to where you can embrace that pain and use that to take you to a better place. So Absolutely. let's talk about the the reason why we feel pain. This could be a million different uh, reasons, but for the most part, it comes from separation. Human beings are wired for love. More than anything, we need to feel love and connection. And if we feel separate from other human beings or other beings or the world or anything, then we feel that pain. And it uh, comes across in a million different ways. We express it in a million different ways. At the end of the day, it is a feeling of not being good enough and not being lovable. We forget that we do not need to rely on external sources in order to feel that love and mm -hmm. worthiness. And we can actually go inward and act and feel it. It's, it's very much possible. It's not like pie in the sky, only um, um, people, monks in the Himalayas can do it. Like we can actually do it as well. So if you give yourself a lot of love, you will instantly feel better. Yeah. Dee, can you give us some examples of what you mean? Um, sure. Yeah. So I was talking about people passing away. Uh, my brother passed away about 13 years ago, and this was a breakthrough that happened because of that. He took his own life. And Aww. even though I knew at that point, even right then, I knew intellectually that it was his decision and I should not should not be taking any um, guilt for it. Mm -hmm. I did. And I cried a lot after that. And every time I cried, I felt I was crying because I loved him. And it was only last year that I finally broke through and I realized that it wasn't love. It was guilt. It was yeah. this feeling that I should have done something or I could have done something. So the, the guilt that I felt, it actually took away from the love that I felt for him because I, what I was feeling was unworthy. And I was feeling that I was not good enough and I did not do enough for him. And that wasn't love. Yeah, That was my own fear, my own insecurities. And it was last year when I broke through that, that I finally came to this conclusion that... Um, not conclusion, I came to the, a breakthrough where I accepted what happened and I stopped feeling guilty for it. And since then, what I felt for him has come from real place love. love. Yeah, then, then you can come from a place of remembering the good times instead right. of focusing on the missed times, right? Right. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, what pain in love reflects. Um, what pain reflects is our own fear. If you catch yourself saying, I miss you so much and I'm in pain because I'm not with you, maybe because the person is traveling or maybe the per because the person has broken up with you, it comes from a, a place of uh, fear of losing that person. When you are... Um, so w what I'm, I want to make very clear is that I'm not saying that you shouldn't be in a relationship or you shouldn't... You sh can just be with anyone. Uh -huh. um, you can choose to be in a relationship where your joys are magnified in a certain way. Mm -hmm. You can choose to be in a relationship where your love is magnified in a certain way. If you are um, feeling pain, then you uh, clearly need to do some work on yourself. Yeah. At the same time, you can be very picky about who you're with because you want to choose to magnify your emotions your positive emotions and you want to be able to share your wins in a way that magnifies it in the way that you choose to. Yeah, and it's so true. Outside of abuse and things that, that are um, exceptions to the rule, if you can be the best that you can for yourself, for that person, the best in the relationship, it can't help but expand and have more of that. Right. But if you're not, it can't help but expand and have more of that. Right. Yeah. 
So uh, what kinds of pain, I mean, because I guess in all relationships you have pain to a degree, it feels like, and it, it sounds like it's an internal thing. So, but I'm sure there's a part of this that's a normal pain when in a relationship. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, yes, um, because pain magnifies emotions and because relationships, sorry, relationships magnify emotions and relationships are a mirror to who you are. So when you are in a relationship, you're going to bump up against triggers that the other person is going to bring into you. Mm -hmm. You're going to face the manipulative jerk inside of you. You're going to face the person who is evil who feels evil you're going to face the jealous person you're going to fa face all kinds of things inside of you that you're not going to want to face because they're going to just feel so horrible and you're like i'm not that horrible person so those kinds of pains are very normal when you're in a relationship because they're triggers that help you grow um, as long as you identify that this is your own trigger and has nothing to do with the other person, yeah. then you can take those triggers and you can work on them and and use that as a platform for growth. And that's pain that you are going to face in a relationship. Yeah. And I always say with relationships, I follow three things come from a place of love, acceptance and accountability, love, really genuine love, uh, acceptance, 100 percent acceptance for who that person is, good and bad, with exceptions to abuse and things like that. Um, and the, but the hardest one is accountability, taking accountability for how I'm going to react in that moment to those negative triggers but the reality is there's positive triggers as well right. and so every time that negative trigger comes up of something that my husband Dave says that doesn't make me feel good I mean there's so many negative triggers that are around every relationship I just go to my positive trigger and then I can instantly get myself in a place of gratitude and appreciation for that relationship and it completely uh, can change everything so if someone's feeling pain because of the loss of, of someone what would you suggest that they do around that um, the first step to do is to understand that it is coming from your own um, sense of insecurity or unworthiness at some level and feed your mind continuously with positive books and audios. Understand that loves resi love resides within you and it is absolutely possible to love yourself deeply even if it feels like nobody else does. Mm. Uh, the next thing would be to set an intention to clear out that feeling of pain Again, it is bringing yourself from a place of unconscious incompetence where you're not aware of what you're doing to being consciously aware of it and deciding that you're going to do it. Um, the next thing I would say is meditate with the intention. Before you sit yeah. down to meditate, have this intention that I'm going to feel love from within and meditate from that space. And um, the next thing is just affirmations. Um, tell yourself, I am deeply loved. I, I am lovable. I love you. I love you. And say your own name. Yeah. And bring yourself back up there. I love that. I do all of those things. I know you do. Yeah. You're a rock star. It's all about perspective. That's what you mm -hmm. teach about, about everything. And you've helped mm -hmm. me with that too, Tina. Thank well, you. Thanks, Keelan. Mm -hmm. Well, you taught me a couple of things too. I did? Yeah. Like what? Uh, well, I'll have to get back to that. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Oh my God. <laughs> I love you, Tina. I love you back. Uh, so um, <laughs> we're, we're joking around here. Any final advice you'd give your listeners? Um, Dee, I know you got lots of advice, but just in this specific segment, what kind of advice would you give our listeners? Sure. I would start by changing the languaging. So the first thing would be to not say that I'm in pain because I'm no longer with this person, but instead switch the languaging to, to say I'm in pain because I haven't understood myself yet. Don't say I'm in pain because this person hurt me. Say I'm in pain because I haven't cleared out this trigger yeah. yet. This is a very important phrase. This phrase will shift massively how you think and to break it down. What you're doing is you're saying that I'm in pain because of me. So you're taking control of solving that and feeling happy beyond mm -hmm. that. And then the next part is by saying, um, I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. And by saying that, you're giving yourself a lot of compassion and acceptance for where you are. And from that place, you can stand on firm, solid ground and build yourself up from there rather than being from a place where you're beating yourself up and just constantly saying, oh, I, I wish I knew. I wish I'd learned this sooner. I wish yeah. I hadn't. Yeah, I wish I was better. So 
Acceptance, yes. A great advice. And and when you go through this process and you see the results, it's so freeing and so magical to know that you really do have complete control over your life. Right. There's going to be stuff that comes into the life, challenges and seasons, because that's the way life is supposed to be. But it's critically in, important. So I love this message, Dee. As we're wrapping up our time here, really quickly, how can somebody get uh, in contact with you if they want to hire you as a coach? Um, they can go to my website, d.coach. That's D-E-E dot coach. Or they can call or text me at 425-894-2308. Wonderful, Dee. Thank you again so much for coming in. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Tina. Coming up next to the money are Women on Top, How to Win the Women's Way. Karen Koenig of Women on Top right here at 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. It's true, many of us spend more time thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for retirement. But if you think your retirement deserves more attention, Karen Koenig agrees, and she'd like to help. Hi, I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Karen Koenig. Together we can give your long-term retirement strategy the intention it deserves. Contact our office at 425-355-3054 or email me at karen.koenig at edwardjones.com. That's K-A-R-E-N dot K-O-E-N-I-G at edwardjones.com. Again, the number is 425-355-3054 or Karen Koenig at edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, November 23rd show. I'm your host, Tina Mitchell. And I'm your host, Keelan Harvey. We bring in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's e- events and how they affect our local economy. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show. Please call the show at one 855 411150. Again, that's 1 855 411150 or online at themoneyr.com. And last guest in studio today, Karen Koenig, Women on Top How to Win in a Woman's Way. Karen, thank you so much for coming in studio. Excited to have a chat with you today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to speak to the listeners. And a little bit about Karen. Uh, Karen has over 30 years experience in male dominated fields in the military. Karen rose to the ranks of major and she figured out quickly that you can't command people, but learn that you can advise and guide. She then took that experience into the aerospace industry. And not only did she advise and guide, Karen learned it was not about perfection, but getting the job done well. Not wanting to continue in corporate America, Karen then opened her financial services businesses. There she has learned along with her other experiences that success doesn't mean self-sacrifice and to stand in her power and behind what she believes in. All these experiences have shaped Karen to write a book so women can know that they don't have to take a step back, but step forward into their success. Karen, we have so much to talk about, but let's start with your book. Uh, What's the book about? So over the course of the 30 plus years I've been in the workforce, I figured out quickly it's not about perfection, but getting the job done well. And success doesn't mean self-sacrifice and to stand in my own power and what I believe in. And then that women need to know that they don't have to take a step back, but a step forward into their success. And we have a responsibility to lead. And when I talk about the responsibility to lead, um, we need to lead as fearlessly as possible, not just for ourselves, but because of our daughters and our nieces, et cetera. And we need to consistently encourage them that the fight is worth it um, from the staggering truth of the Me Too movement to the fact in 2018 we had um, uh, over 100 women elected to the House of Representatives. And that's more women filling seats than Mm -hmm. any other year in her story. (laughs) I love that. But part of me feels that that shouldn't have made the news. And Mm. it's because 
if we had moved further into progression, no one would care who was, who were in those seats. Yeah, and I can kind of imagine your why behind your book, but I want to I want to ask you as an author myself, there's always a a big why behind right why you wrote your book. Um, share a little bit about that. Well, so when it comes to the workplace and or being an entrepreneur, um, women have different fears than men do. And we pay, place a lot of unneeded uh, expectations on ourselves because of feedback, wanted or unwanted, from our family, our friends, um, and our coworkers. So after being in three different male-dominated fields, um, I wanted to just address those issues, which led me to write the book, Women on Top, How to Win in a Woman's Way, whether you've been in male-dominated fields or not. That's really cool. Well, mm-hmm. as our listeners know, I have a three-year-old daughter. So I need a copy of your book. When she <laughs> she can't read yet, but when she does, you can read uh, it to her. <laughs> yeah, it'll be maybe maybe like bedtime material. It'll be like subliminal, so right. she just goes and takes on the world. Um, let's talk about what are the three things, the three main things that that we'd get from your book. Okay, so the first one would be um, it. It's a little bit about perfection and why get, getting ready to ready doesn't work. Being ready to be ready doesn't work. So um, you don't need to be 100% proficient. Us women tend to think that we have to do stuff 100% from the top. And my philosophy is do first, uh, think later, and learn by doing. And what I mean by that is I learned how to ride a bike. And how I learned how to ride a bike is I got on the bike and I was at the top of a hill. And my brother said, yeah, just pull your feet up and just go down the hill. Oh, my gosh. I didn't ask how any questions. <laughs> I didn't ask how to stop. I didn't ask how to, you know, what was going to happen at the end. So I'm going, you know, I felt like 100 miles an hour. Got partway down. I'm screaming at my brother, how do I stop? How do I stop? And it was one of those bikes where you have to do reverse pedaling to stop. It was oh, back yeah. in that day. Oh, jeez. And probably dating myself a little bit. But, um, of course, my feet weren't on the pedals. So they're spinning and there was no way to stop, else I would have hurt myself. So what uh-huh. did I do? I crashed. Uh-huh. And then I ended up hitting my head on, on the ground and getting a great big goose egg. But So it's maybe that's not the best story for that, but it's, <laughs> 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 I did it. You know, I thought about it, and, and then I learned that that's probably not the best way to ride a bike. And then the next thing is per- perfection really isn't progress. So um, you can learn what you don't know. And um, we tend to over-credential ourselves a lot of the times before we get started, and we waste a lot of time doing that. Mm -hmm. And um, to overcome that perfection syndrome, I just tell people, evaluate what skills you have, write them down, and then believe in the abilities that you have in those areas. And you don't necessarily need official degrees to be like in financial services or to be uh, in the loan business or a real estate officer. Um, But... um, just start and then see see what you may need to learn better later. And the second thing that we need to learn about uh, in the book is success in your field doesn't necessarily mean self-sacrificing self-care. So when you need help for it, ask for it. So when I, um, when I had hip surgery last August, I flew my dad in, and but then kind of didn't have anybody else help me. But I had people wanting to bring in food and that kind of stuff to me. And I finally realized it's not about me. It's about them. It's about them wanting to help me. So um, the other thing is you need to learn your boundaries. So figure out what your schedule is and then stick to it. So if you want to work 30 hours a week, work 30 hours a week. If you want to work 35, then do that. But be laser focused during that time. And uh, learn self-care. It's it's more than getting a mani-pedi. So it's balance in your work and your life. Decide on your family time, your fun time, your exercise time, and your work time, and then block that into your schedule. So there's a financial advisor that um, was speaking at, at an event, and he was talking how he likes to boat. And he boats two, two months out of the year. So he only has 10 months then to meet with clients. And he has 500 clients, and he likes to meet with them two times per year. So that's 1,000 appointments. Wow. So you only have 20 days in a month, really, because of the weekends, because he doesn't work on weekends. So you have he, he did the math, and he figured out he has to do five appointments a day mm-hmm. to stay on track. But because he puts his fun time and his family time on his schedule first, he's able to do that yeah. correctly. And then the last thing that I want people to get from this book is you're either growing or you're going. And what I mean by that is there's winners and losers. We have to stop making average be the norm. 
by handing out participation trophies. Mm-hmm. And winning in earnest actually helps identify what your skills are and mentally prepares you for using them later in life. And I think we're losing that, uh, especially with my my children. When they were growing up, they got participation trophies, and it just made me so angry. And <clears throat> I don't want any of us to be average women. We're better than that. We need to be great. So what I tell people is uh, track daily, monthly, and quarterly success and then celebrate those successes. We yeah. tend to not do that. And then have some type of daily ritual, like reading daily, listening to a blog or reading a blog, listening to podcasts, audibles, and then or and or meditate. And then the biggest thing is we have a responsibility to lead, um, lead as fairly as possible to accommodate for the changes that are happening every day in the business women's world. And I joined the military in the 80s when women weren't valued for what uh, actually for their presence in the military at all. I work construction project management in the 2000s, and now I'm a financial advisor in an industry that's only 17% women. Yeah, crazy. And you know what? I'm, I'm looking at you and, and hearing all of you know that you've done. Um, I know that there's been fears in there, but you've been able to overcome them because we all have them. So let's talk about what fears keep a woman from holding back. Well, I know firsthand because I lived it. So um, like writing this book and all the steps that took that it took to do it. Mm -hmm. um, Once I got down to the nitty gritty, I got stuck um, because I let mind fear set in. And my brain said, what if people don't like this book? What if they don't like my stories? What if they don't like me? And um, I kind of put the book on the shelf for a while and then came back to it later. So it took me a little longer to write it than I wanted to. And one thing is, is I had anxiety, but then I realized I had, I was talking to somebody and the symptoms of anxiety and creativity are the same. The sweaty palms, the feeling sick to your stomach, yep. your racing heart. Mm-hmm. So what I found is you just have to take action no matter what. Yeah. And that's really interesting because when you, you know, talk about going and pre- presenting, um, I mean, it's, it's true. It, it's the same thing. So it's just using that to the side that you want to rather than letting it take you down. So love that. Karen, uh, I just realized the word that evaded me with Noemi is uh, millennials. That's the word, not the younger. Yeah, millennials. <laughs> that's the word that was killing me. Gosh, I just, it wouldn't come We were just come talking up. on the way. He's uh, like in like in the middle of that and the silent generation. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. I'm like right on the cusp there. Yeah, thank, right. thank goodness I'm not. Uh, no, no, no. I'll just stop. Um, what piece of advice would you give someone new to business such as millennials and um, that are especially working in a male dominated industry? Well, first, um, I like to tell them you need to relate to others. Not everything is about you. That's the about them generation. Um, You need to have common ground with your male counterparts and you have to teach them how to treat you like an operator's manual. Um, I used to try to fit in and act tough back in the military when I was with all men. But once I voiced how I wanted to be treated, then it really changed the way the men viewed me and treated me. And then just understand that success comes in many forms, but most importantly, you just need to be yourself and uh, not your worst self, but your best self and bring your personality into the mix, but overlap it in a way that everybody can be successful. So Karen, what about um, a woman that's listening right now that's just stuck in her career? What would you tell her? So I would just say Analyze the situation. Most likely it's self-imposed. As women, we stay stuck in the same career, whether we like it or not, because sometimes we think we have to. And we can't let our employees down or our coworkers or our family. So um, what I say is ask yourself, where do you want to go? And then what's the next step that you need to take? And um, so take the time to either move on in the same career or you just need to map out a new one, kind of like what Mm -hmm. I did. So in chapter one of my book, there's an exercise that you can go through where you look at your life and you compare what you do now versus to what you would prefer to do. Mm -hmm. And um, then where in life are you executing processes in a certain way, even though there is a better way, but you're not being listened to. And um, where in life are you doing work for someone else, but it's not congruent with who you are. Yeah. I like, you know, it's all about accountability and action. I yeah, love your course. message. It's mm-hmm. like saying that I this is I'm here because of me and my brain, which is a terrible thing. I mean, we all have that little guy on our shoulder yeah. that says, no, you suck. And, uh, you know, and just shut up, little guy. Let's keep going mm-hmm. and fight the good fight and do what you want in life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so this show is good for women or for men. Yes. yes mm-hmm. We can all learn something from this. Um, 
So how do you define and what's your definition, Karen, of success in, in a male dominated industry? Um, that you just want to hold your own. You want to hold your own by knowing you have an advantage in the workforce, um, holding your own by understanding the world needs you, your opinions, your actions, your advocacy, um, your beliefs, your moxie and your unique, unique brand of womanhood you present to everyone that you meet. And last, hold your uh, own even when you don't want to. When you're tired of fighting and correcting and educating and standing in your truth for what must change, you have to believe in the power of visualizing the change you want to see and be in the world. Yeah, great ad- great advice, Karen. Karen, thank you so much for uh, coming back in studio. It's a pleasure to have you here and excited to have you back. Thanks. And this is your host, Tina Mitchell. And your co-host, Keelan Harvey. Signing off for the day from 1150 AM KKNW. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 133075, are licensed loan originators with Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, and MLS 7233. The views expressed by the speakers on the preceding program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC.